you see John Stewart talking to that horrible defense secretary? Do you know that the Pentagon has never passed an audit? Who should really be on trial? The Pentagon spending a bunch of money on a war they're lying about or that little boy? <laughs> Hello there, you 6.4 million Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage towards truth and freedom. Surely we must eventually awaken this limitless light within us in order that we can confront these corrupted systems. I know it seems hard sometimes. I struggle too. But we have no choice but to wade onwards in great hope that we can change things using these powerful resources within us. Turn on the notification bell right now. It's the only way you can be sure that you'll get our daily content. John Stewart's doing a good job, isn't he? Talking to people, having confrontations with that defense secretary lady where he brought up the fact that the Pentagon's never passed an audit. What's the point in doing these audits then? This is taking place of course while the Pentagon papers of that lad called something like Buster Texiera, I'll get his actual name in a minute at some point, has revealed that we're being told lies about the Ukraine war, the efficacy of the campaign so far, whether or not Ukraine will ever reclaim those territories. All the while money, your money by the way, is being pumped into keeping the conflict going because we've also been informed there's no chance of peace for at least least a year. So I'm asking you, and I want you to answer in the comments in the chat, who should really be on trial? That little boy or the military industrial complex itself? Okay, so you need to explain to me, do you understand what an audit does and the degree to which it is linked to the question that you're asking? I believe so. Okay, go ahead. Give me your explanation. Uh, no, I, I, I don't mind learning. So, <laughs> Has she ever watched John Stewart? She's been rude, isn't she, to someone who most of us are aware is pretty sharp and knows how to behave on camera, knows how to conduct an investigation, knows how to interrogate people. The narrative we're interested in here is why are we focusing on that little boy, buddy boy Texiera, when plainly people in positions of considerable power are literally contributing to the deaths of military personnel, let alone the fact that people that have given their lives in service or have suffered in service aren't being properly looked after. You know there's a bunch of people in the military that are living on food stamps whose actions and decisions are actually leading to the death of soldiers and military personnel. Is it Buddy Texiera or is it high up people in the defence industry who are masking the facts about the war and facilitating ongoing contracts. Let me know in the chat. What, what <laughs> I would suggest is that uh, the audit that they have in, in the military doesn't really look at um, whether or not there's efficacy. It's just whether they got delivered the thing that they ordered. And they that, is, that is any audit. That is any audit. That is true. But generally, those audits aren't $400 billion for Raytheon and $1.7 trillion for a plane that doesn't seem to be doing. Like, there is a lot of waste, fraud, and abuse within a system. Audits and is... waste, fraud, and abuse are not the same thing. She really thinks she's going to be able to get through this conversation simply through analysing the etymology of the word audit. You don't seem to know what the word audit means. That's not the way out of this conversation. Because obviously the question underneath the question is, is the reason that these audits being failed because there's like loads of corruption and money's getting skimmed off the top and creamed off the top? I don't want it to be this, do you? I want it to be that John Stewart sits down and talks to a defence secretary and she goes, no, honestly, what it is is this is how the money's being spent and we're really doing our best. I know it looks on the surface like Raytheon and Norfolk Grumman and BAE system. It looks like what they're doing is they're presenting us with a bill and then they're taking a load of profit. Then these weapons aren't making it to Ukraine and actually we're prolonging that war so we can keep these deals going. I know it looks like that, but it isn't that. The problem is actually this little boy, this bloody little boy. I, I say put that lad in prison for at least a couple of thousand years till he's learned his bloody lesson. So let's uh, decompose then these please pieces. Please educate for a me on, on sure. What so the, an audit the is exactly what you just described, yes. which is do I know what was delivered to which place? Right. Also, you can't be all confident and haughty if the Pentagon has failed five consecutive audits. At that point, I don't know, man. I mean, have you ever failed an audit? Like, right, what have you been doing with the money? Oh, I don't know, just spent it, I suppose. Just asked me nan. My uncle had some of it. All right, well, we'll see you in a year. If that happened like four or five times, you feel like you'd be in prison by about the third one, wouldn't you? The ability to pass an audit or in a, the fact that the DOD has not passed an audit is not suggestive of waste, fraud, and abuse. That is completely false right there. Lately, we're being granted conversations and confrontations that are emblematic of what we suspect 
is the dynamic between us and the powerful. Whether it's Elon Musk and that BBC reporter, I mean, you see like that he doesn't want to answer questions and he thinks that the BBC are beyond reproach or this conversation between John Stewart and this lady or some of Matt Taibbi's confrontations. What we're getting confronted with is the pose of authority and power, a kind of superciliousness, a self-entitled authority, a kind of because I said so mentality. I'm not here to talk about that. We're not here to answer those questions. Well, guess what? Those questions are coming. There's a deluge of those questions because people don't trust the media. People don't trust the government. People don't trust corporations anymore. And you're right not to trust them. You're right. We don't have to indulge in conspiracies. What we can plainly see, though, on the basis of these five failed audits and the media furore surrounding Buddy Boy Texas lad is that people want us to look over here at a lad revealing information in chat rooms that doesn't put anyone at risk. That espionage act should be called the don't say stuff we don't want you to say act. So what is now it's a question of it's suggestive that we can't we don't have an accurate inventory that we can pull up of what we have where. That is not the same as saying we can't do that because waste, fraud, and abuse has occurred. Just because we can't, when audited, tell you where the money's gone, that doesn't mean fraud or cheating or abuse. Yeah, it don't look good, though. So, in my world, yeah. that's waste. How is that waste? If I give you a billion dollars and you can't tell me what happened to it, that to me is wasteful. That, that means you well, are not nece- responsible. <laughs> but if you can't tell me where it went. <laughs> I don't know where a billion dollars gone. I'm very busy. Do you know how long it takes to get my hair to look like this? Ages. Well, I can't tell you exactly how long. Between 10 minutes and a month. Then what am I supposed to think? And when there has been reporting, I mean, this is not, look, I'm not, I'm not saying this is on you. Also, why is she laughing? And- <laughs> this isn't funny. It's not a funny situation, is it? It's not like, oh god, this is hilarious. Do you remember when the guinea pig got out? This is like, where's the fucking money we've given you? And that you caused this. But <laughs> I think it's it's a tough argument to I'm make sure that cause it. <laughs> an, an $850 billion budget to an organization that can't pass an audit and tell you where that money went, like, I think most people would consider that somewhere in the realm of waste, fraud, or abuse, because they would wonder why that money isn't well accounted for. I mean, well, I'm trying all, to understand is, where, where, where you're trying to go, other than the dollars, which really well, bother you. I think... <laughs> yeah, where are those dollars? Oh, you're really worried about that. What else are you worried about? Whether or not the war is legal or illegitimate, or whether we're telling the truth, or whether or not the Pentagon fundamentally funnels money towards the military-industrial complex, and it's impossible to record that accurately without revealing that military personnel are not benefiting from your tax dollars, but the various military-industrial complex companies are benefiting. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly what the problem is. I think it doesn't really bother me. I think it's all connected. Okay. I think tell when me, I tell look... me that story. Bloody hell, she's awful. How many times have we got to put up with these people in Congress sneering, condescending people? Do you know what your job is? Your job is you work for the people. It should be like, hi, how's it going? Yeah, sorry, we've done this. I'm sorry about that. That is a bit confusing. We're, we're going to improve that. Yeah, it is a bit mental. We've had five audits and failed them. That's terrible that there are American military personnel living on food stamps right now. Terrible that there's a homeless crisis and veterans. We're going to address all this. You're quite right. Should be like, ha, 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 this is funny. Oh, this is brilliant. Ha, ha. It's not hijinks. It's hijacking public money. I mean, we got out of 20 years of war and the Pentagon got a $50 billion raise. Like, to me, that's fucking corruption. I'm sorry. And if, like, if that blows your mind, and if you think, like, that's like a crazy agenda for me to have, I, I really think that that's institutional thinking. John Stewart there staying relaxed and spelling it out to a giggling, shrieking, awful government of Parachik. Let's have a look at it in more detail. Last year, the Department of Defense revealed that it had failed its fifth consecutive audit. The Biden administration provided details this month on its $886.3 billion budget proposal for national defense in fiscal year 2024. The Pentagon spending path would put the military's annual budget over the $1 trillion threshold in just a matter of years, its chief financial officer said recently. When an institution 
institution receives that much revenue, they have to be accountable and responsible. The problem with uh, the defence minister there, the deputy defence minister, is not just that her haughtiness is socially unpleasant, it's that it aligns very neatly and beautifully with the attitude we can assume is institutional based on these facts. Oh, it seems like they don't care and they think they can do whatever they want and they don't even have to answer questions or indeed pass audits because their power supersedes the power of government and indeed democracy and no matter what party's in, they're going to ensure that the military industrial complex continues to thrive, even if that means sponsoring and prolonging foreign conflicts that lead to the death of American military personnel, whose image they're willing to use as propaganda to mask their corruption and who they're willing to put to the forefront when conducting a trial against poor old Buddy Texiera in order to say, hey, we're doing this because we want to protect American personnel. If you do want to protect American personnel, then use the resources that the American taxpayers are giving you to give American service people a decent, fair wage and a respectable way of life. Instead of, of course, funneling it seemingly unaccountably towards the military industrial complex. Jack Texera, suspect in the Pentagon leaks, has been charged under the Espionage Act, which criminalises the unauthorised retention and disclosure of national security secrets. It carries a sentence of up to 10 years per count, and each leaked document could be its own count. The Washington Post says it has about 300 documents. That means that Jack Texera will be 3,021 years old by the time he gets out. I think if he's not learned his lesson in the first 2,000 years, the penal system also needs an audit. The releases of classified information by Edward Snowden, a contractor at the National Security Agency, and Chelsea Manning, an army intelligence analyst, were treated by the government as catastrophes that jeopardised human lives. This did not turn out to be true. Documents released by Snowden revealed that the government was engaged in unconstitutional spying on Americans, while information that Manning provided to WikiLeaks showed that US forces killed journalists and civilians in Iraq and lied about it afterwards. Despite the government's dire warning, subsequent reviews showed that no deaths could be linked to the disclosures by Manning and WikiLeaks. None. Zero. Not one. So they said it was endangering the lives of military personnel, but in fact what it revealed was they're spying on you and killing civilians and journalists. How dare you say that we are killing civilians and journalists in Iraq and spying on American people? That put American personnel's lives at risk. How? Okay, give me a minute. Well, we're going to audit you on this in a moment. Oh, no, I can't be expected to pass audits. Audits are complicated. Don't even mention those to me. I'm going to need a couple of billion dollars worth of missiles even to get through this audit. One of the leaked documents revealed the US doesn't expect Russia-Ukraine peace talks in 2023. Another leak that was also reported by the Washington Post says the US thinks it's unlikely the Ukraine will regain any significant territory in its expected counteroffensive, a stark difference from what the Biden administration has been saying publicly. So the key thing here is these revelations have made it plain that in private, the Biden administration said that they're not going to get any territory back. In public though, the Ukrainians are brave, strong people. This counteroffensive will be a success. It's worth pumping your taxpayer dollars into it. Well, if they don't believe what they're saying, what is it they believe? And I'll offer you this. Is it possible they believe it's profitable to continue the war? Is it possible they consider it necessary to engage Russia in an ongoing conflict? Once we know that they don't even believe it as a result of these leaks, by the way, no one's ever covering that, no one's covering the content of the leaks, then we have to ask, we have a duty to ask, what is it they believe? Why are we talking about the criminality of young Jack Texera, who it seems isn't a plucky little idealist, but just a kid on a chat room revealing stuff for casual kudos in those chat room encounters. Why are we talking about him? He's not the story. He's inadvertent. Look at how the media partner the government in distracting us from the facts. In November 2022, there was legislation pending in Congress that indicates that the US government believes the Ukraine war may continue for years. On October the 11th, the Senate Armed Services Committee submitted its amended draft of the National Defense Authorization Act for 2023. Nestled within the draft is a provision that would establish an emergency multi-year plan to award massive defense contracts to Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, BAE Systems and other war corporations to produce weapons for Ukraine and to replenish US stockpiles, as well as those of foreign allies and partners. An amendment spearheaded by New Hampshire Democratic Senator Gene Shaheen and co-sponsored by Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn would allow the Pentagon to award non-competitive no-bid contracts to arms manufacturers under the plan. 
Those kind of pieces of legislation sponsored by both parties, as usual, suggest that actually what's happening is that there is an agenda to continue funneling public money into private hands. Let me know in the chat in the comments if you agree. And the reason the Pentagon keeps failing audits is because these relationships are kind of messy and potentially corrupt. Congress is supportive of this. They're going to give us multi-year authority and they're going to give us funding to really put into the industrial base. And I'm talking billions of dollars into the industrial base to fund these production lines, said the Pentagon's chief weapons buyer, Bill Laplante. What you really want is these people on trial. Jack Taxera, if he goes away for a thousand, five hundred, ten years, a million years, it's not going to make any difference to you. It's not going to make any difference to the military. What we should be analysing, auditing, scrutinising, adjudicating is this experience. Expenditure. If this doesn't change, the world cannot change. This is a key component of systemic corruption and ultra-democratic power, power that is beyond democracy. If we don't address this, nothing can change. Past and current military spending equals 48% of all spent federal tax dollars. So these are not insignificant sums. Half of all federal tax dollars, federal tax dollars, so I guess you've got state taxes as well, but half of all federal tax dollars is going in this direction. This is a significant industry. I mean, it's almost inconceivably large. So the blasé, insouciant, haughty attitude of that politician, who you also pay, so you can add that to the eventual figure that won't ever get audited. It's not an insignificant sum, and it's certainly not funny. Before the war ends, many Ukrainians and Russians will die while Raytheon, Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman make fortunes. So this is the key point of the video we're making. Who's causing more deaths? Little buddy boy Texera or Northrop Grumman, Raytheon and the military industrial complex partnership between your government that you pay for and those organisations. If you were to audit it, good luck, and scrutinise it, good luck, what would result? Like, hold on a minute, that meant that we made that decision and that meant we prolonged it and that meant we didn't debate this and that meant a peace deal was taken off the table and that meant we inspired that coup. Oh, and that means that that money never made it to that particular organisation and that meant that those service people ended up homeless. That means these service people are on food stamps. Look at all the death. That meant these people committed suicide. Count it all up. Count it all up. Because I've had a good look at Chelsea Manning and Snowden and Assange and the total is zero. Zero. Like the number of successful Pentagon audits. Zero. 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 At the same time, networks and cable news is replete with pundits and experts or more accurately military officials turned consultants whose current jobs and clients are not disclosed to viewers. For obvious reasons. This while military families are reporting housing, health and financial challenges according to a survey released by the Military Family Advisory Network which found that nearly a quarter of enlisted families are experiencing food insecurity and more than 60% of respondents pay more than they can comfortably afford for housing. So if you're in the military, which was one of those jobs that used to mean, well at least you're taken care of, you're going to eat and have house, 60% of them can't comfortably afford housing and a quarter of them can't eat. One fifth of active service families and nearly 40% of veteran families surveyed reported less than $500 of emergency savings or no emergency savings fund. And over three quarters of military families indicated that they carry debt. Almost 40,000 veterans are without shelter in the US on any given night. The leading causes of homelessness among vets are PTSD, social isolation, unemployment and substance abuse. Veterans account for 11% of homeless adults in the US. Sounds to me like a system that could be radically improved Proved with a few key decisions and a few audits. Although sometimes I read stuff like that and I feel despair, sometimes I see people like that defence minister and I feel hopeless, actually it shows that the room for improvement is so vast that we would have to be stupid not to demand it. We'd have to be stupid not to put aside cultural differences and come together in order to prioritise what are plainly the defining problems of our time. Corruption, systemic abuse of power that takes place beyond the reach of democracy, i.e. whether you vote Republican or Democrat, you're gonna get some version of this. So we have to form new alliances. We have to form a new agenda. We have to create a new manifesto because it's disgusting to me that people that give their lives in service, whether they actually die for it or not, are ending up homeless, are unable to afford food and shelter, while the Pentagon are unable to pass a bloody audit and while the representatives of the defence industry just haughtily dis dismissed the inquiries of an on-screen journalist. We have to demand better. We have to put aside all other arguments until these
these problems are addressed. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments in the chat. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. Turn on the notification bell right now and subscribe to our channel so you see the content that we make every single day. Three, six, five. We are not going to give up. You can audit us in one year, 365 videos. More important though than any of that is that you please stay free.